Tyler. Hey, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> I'm Rosef Callwood, Joel Sains. This is Daniel Culver Killenberg. Um, we're here to discuss Blue Umbrella. So, Daniel, you mentioned something about Res Evil 6 where <clears throat> if they were a thing that Neo Umbrella really damaged their image. So, do you think they weren't around at that point in time? I think it's possible. Um, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it may be possible that they did exist, but it's kind of weird, though, that we've never heard of them until now. Yeah. Do you think there's a member of Stars running Blue Umbrella and we just don't know about it? You know, actually, I didn't think about that. That actually does seem possible. I mean, with them being the whole, um, you know, the private military thing now. Yeah, the B, I think it's what they call the BSA and Blue Umbrella. They sort of combined, and we didn't hear about them till Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. For those who haven't played the DLC, Not a Hero, that's what was unveiled that Chris is working with them. Because he's part, of, he's been part of the BSA for a while. Um, but he, you pointed out something in your video. He does not trust them. So what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, that's actually another thing too. Like, it doesn't even seem like he'd work with them. With, I mean, I understand them not being the same umbrella, but the fact they actually have umbrella in the name, like, you know, is a re is a good enough reason not to trust them. I mean. Look at all the damage Umbrella did. Yeah, what's what's weird too is, and you you noticed this too was, on the helicopter they don't use the blue logo; they use the normal logo. Yeah. Oh yeah. One thing. Um, it's not a big deal, but I actually want to point out that the what Chris is in is actually called the BSAA. Yeah, I, yeah. No, it's weird, but it has two A's. Yeah. Thanks for that. What make what makes sense? Oh, you welcome. What makes sense if you know the whole thing? But I mean, it's weird because you know usually organization only have one. You know. <laughs> yeah. You pointed out something too about uh, Veronica, and it's the same. That it's the same name as Code Veronica. Do you think there's anything to that or no? You know, I didn't think about that. Um, I know, like, I know there's actually two versions, but. I think the difference between the two versions is I think X has better graphics. I could be wrong about that. Well, I mean, I think it has extra stuff too, but you know, like, you know, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, yeah. What did you think of them? Because you pointed something this out too. They did not recruit Lucas Baker. Is it any possibility they just didn't hear of him, or do you think there's more to that? I think there could probably be to me more to that, to be honest. Like, you know how, like, if you read into the files, for those that don't know, actually, I think this is more present in the, in the Daughters DLC, but, yeah, he was actually a troublemaker even before they got infected. Yeah, he he had run-ins, and that, that's what I'll say, they didn't, and he was real smart, too, that's the thing, even before the virus like, took a hold of him, so, my thing of it is, do you really think Bio has, I mean, I know it looks like an accident, it looks like something that just, just happened that went wrong with the um, Umbrella experiment, and, but do you think it's a complete accident? You know, that's actually a good question, like, I know, like, with... You know, Evelyn, I, th I know she, like, showed up, but maybe she wasn't supposed to show up, you know? Like, you know, maybe she actually went rogue or whatever. Yeah. The one thing, like, okay, like, Mr. X is, Mr. X and Birkin are two good examples. Mr. X is something the, you know, the Umbrella Corporation had control over. And Birkin is something they didn't. Well, that's true, yeah. Do you think that any there's any way possible that 
I know he got killed off in five, but just for humor's sake that Wesker's involved in any of this, he's still alive somehow. You know, I've been wondering about that. Like, I know people say, like, well, he's dead, and I know even the Resident Evil wiki says he's deceased, but for those that don't know, wikis are actually ran by fans, so that could just be Capcom not revealing he's alive yet. But anyway, I was thinking maybe, like, what if, like, you know, someone from Neo Umbrella or Blue Umbrella actually cloned him and brought him back that way? It's weird because there's always been intrigue surrounding that character, even since the very beginning that we've touched on, that he's, at one minute he's so rogue from Umbrella, it's, it almost seems like, even in the original, he's sort of, he's not necessarily working with Umbrella, he's more working for himself. Well, that's true. And actually, isn't the original Wesker a clone of someone as well? You you would probably know that more than me. I think so. You could be right. But what I'll say is, if they in Blue Umbrella for Blue Umbrella, the one thing I want to touch on with you is there's former members of the original Umbrella working in Blue Umbrella. So and. Do you think there's anybody that we've seen in the past games that could come back and they be revealed as the leader? You know, that's actually a good question. Um, I'm trying to think of who could it could be, but you never know. Like, um, you know, I hate to say this. I wonder about Annette, you know, um, Birkin's wife, but. I mean, the lab blew up, but you never know. Maybe she escaped somehow, like Ada did. Yeah, that's... A, yeah, Annette really... Annette's always been a question mark to me, because... Especially with the remake now, the way they did it, it's like... At one moment, she's good. One moment, she's bad. She doesn't know what she wants to be. Um, so, I'm with you. Annette could definitely be... A name I want to throw out here, too, is Dr. Adam Marcus, um, who, you know, created, what, the T-Virus, I believe. So, is there, do you think he has any involvement at all of what's going on? I mean, he could have some involvement, but he actually, um, in Resident Evil Zero, he actually turns into the, he turns into a creature, and he basically turns into, like, the queen or whatever, and you, you know, you destroy it. Oh, okay. Do you think any of his kids are involved? Oh yeah, that could be. Um, I hate to say this, but see, in for those who haven't seen the last movie, um, he has a daughter named Alicia Marcus, who Alice is supposedly a clone of this whole time. Maybe they could bring Alicia to the movies, but you know, obviously change the character. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Do you? Now, I did not play Revelations, and you did, so do you think there's anything from there that could link Blue Umbrella? Um, you know what I think about, but there's a girl named um, Natalia, well this is actually Revelation. I know you said Revelations, but in Revelations 2, there's actually a girl named Natalia where she can actually see the monster's weak spots, maybe she's like an experiment or something. Yeah, there could be. Do you think that there's a new virus out there? That there's a virus we haven't heard from from Umbrella standpoint? You know, I think there is, because, like, you know, that's always a thing, you know. Resident Evil, you always think the virus is dead, but then a new one pops up. So that's what I think. I think there's going to be a new virus or something. Do you think Biohazard was a new virus, Daniel? Um, I think it actually was, like, well, I know it, I know it was like a mold, but yeah, I think it's the you know, same idea pretty much, you know. Yeah. Or maybe they used a, or maybe they used a virus to make the mold, I don't know. It's very strange because the one thing I want to point out is you have all those scientists, and I know, like, it, we don't know exactly which scientists are good or bad. We've seen Dr. Adam Marcus. We've seen Dr. Birkin. And Resident Evil 5, even though I'm not a fan of it, I played it, and I know you did too, 
there's some crooked characters in there as well. So, but there's always got to be one end all to be all. Is there, do you think there's another member of, of a scientist team that, I don't know, maybe helped with the virus and we're just not hearing from them? Oh yeah, I could um see that. And actually, that'd be a cool idea because, oh yeah, in Revelations, I forgot, there actually was a group like, I forgot what they're called, but yeah, they create the T-Abyss virus. Oh, wow. So maybe it's something that, you know. <laughs> yeah. If they reveal blue, if they reveal blue umbrella and that they're gonna, you know, the people who run blue umbrella are gonna turn on Chris. The turn, what do you think the turning point would honestly be? Would it be because it it didn't happen in Biohazard, and that's something when I was playing DLC, not a hero that I was concerned with. But when do you think the turning point would be? turning point um i think it'll probably be like something about like when he's trying to stop the virus they'll like stop him and say like we've actually we're the creators that and they talk about the perfect world and all that bullshit yeah i could i could see that 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 would be sick what's the one thing you want to see from the blue umbrella standpoint daniel is there something that you want to see from there or someone? Um, uh, someone, um, that's actually a good question, um, because I know most of them are, like, dead, you know, obviously, because, you know, oh, you know what, um, wouldn't it be cool if they, um, revealed who actually created Nemesis and he's, he or she is involved with it? Yeah, that's actually a good point Daniel's bringing up. Ne they've never revealed who created the Nemesis program in the games. Or the project itself. So that could be a reveal that, you know, it definitely hasn't been touched on. And that's something I'm curious too. It, Nemesis. I know they did in the movie though, but. I know in okay. the movie, yeah. But not in the games. Um, is there. Do you think at any all that there's a scientist? Like, let's say the scientist who created Nemesis, did maybe Umbrella kept him private or kept that private? Well, yeah, I could see that because, um, for those that don't know, in the games Umbrella, I mean, well, not, yeah, in the games Nemesis wanted to kill the star, the remaining stars members. And, you know, obviously that probably would be something they wanted to keep, you know, under wraps. Yeah, and it seemed to, the one thing I found weird about Nemesis, and maybe this has a link, maybe I'm stretching a little bit, maybe this could have a link to Biohazard and down the road, Blue Umbrella. He seemed to know who they were. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, And obviously, you know, they want to keep that under wraps because, you know, killing, I mean, I know they were doing like messed up stuff already, but yeah, if they want, if they were planning on killing cops, especially to special tactics, you know, they would, They'd be in deep shit, you know. They'd pretty much go to prison. Yeah, they. You're right. They they targeted them, and I mean, Brad Vickers' death is notorious in uh, Resident Evil Three Nemesis, and um, he just he hunts down them like psychotically almost. Now, you know, I was... actually an interesting fact about. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. You know, an, an interesting fact about Brad is what a lot of people don't know is the um, the first part of Resident Evil 3 takes place before Resident Evil 2, and as you know, like, he gets impaled. In Resident Evil 2, you can actually see his zombie. I mean, in the original version of Resident Evil 2. Oh, wow. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Do you think that, um, Nem that the Nemesis program was just... I know that he says stars, but do you think stars was always the initial target? You know, that's actually a good question. Like, maybe they did change it at one point, but, um, I, you know what, maybe, it, I think it was actually because, like, you know, Wesker was always secret, 
Leah Stars member. That's where it's kind of complicated, though, because if he remained a Stars member, would have targeted him as well, or does it know them specifically? I'm. That's sort of where I'm curious about what that is. Do you think maybe Umbrella and Wesker aren't as tight as maybe we'd like to believe that maybe Nemesis just wasn't for the good Stars members, it was for Wesker too? Oh yeah, I could see that. Like, and For those that don't know, like Wesker and Birkin are double crossers. Um, I know you haven't played Zero, but yeah, in Zero, like, it's actually revealed like with, as you know, Marcus actually discovered the T-Virus and leeches. But see, that's the thing, like, Birkin and Wesker went into his, you know, his lab and had him killed. And then they say, like, you know, it's our project now, you know. <laughs> Damn, that's some cold-blooded shit. <laughs> um, do you think Wesker's just completely in this for himself? Oh, yeah, I think so. Um, and I know, like, this isn't really... I think this is actually one of those weird things that's touched on more of the original, but... And I could be wrong. Maybe it's, like, memory error or something, but... Didn't... In the original version of Resident Evil 2, didn't Wesker actually turn on Birkin as well? I'm not sure. I think... I'm trying to think in the Resident Evil 2 who it was that actually did turn on Birkin. I know it was somebody. I don't think it was the, um... I think you're right because I don't think it was the um, the squad, the the people who it wasn't done like it was done in the remake. That's for sure. I think it was either him or Ada. I know it was one of them. Oh yeah, that, that's I like the remake, but that's one thing I kind of am annoyed about because they should have kept stuff like that consistent. You know. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I I wish they wouldn't have made that big of like that kind of change, but they did. Um Do you think that Sherry is involved in Blue Umbrella? You know, that's actually some us thing about too. Like maybe she is. And I know in Resident Evil 6 she's a good guy, but see, here's one thing I was thinking of. Maybe they're going to work, maybe her and Jake are going to work for Umbrella, oh, I mean Blue Umbrella, and then they actually find out that's bad, and they're like, you guys used us, or something like that. Yeah, I could see that. Jake West, Jake is really an interesting character. I know Leon, like, me and you were bought in with Six with more Leon, but I gotta give him credit, Jake was a pretty interesting character. And actually, I actually like something with him, like, for those that don't know, like, he's actually Wesker's illegitimate son. Like, he actually never knew Wesker, but that's what I liked about him is, like, he actually decided to go the path, like, I'm not my father, you know, and joined the good guys. Yeah, he didn't go down the road his dad did, right. <clears throat> do you think there's, do you think at any all that, because I know Pierce gets killed in five, that Pierce is involved some way, somehow. You know, I was actually thinking about that, too, and I know it's weird I keep saying that, but I really did. Like, I was thinking, like, maybe Piers actually was, quote-unquote, rescued by Umbrella, but they, but, you know, he's infected, so now he's, like, you know, he's, like, um, he's one of the villains now. Do you think they formed maybe a new virus from his mutation? Oh, yeah, I actually could see that, you know. That would be interesting, too. Yeah, it would. It's really weird because the scientific aspect of all this is what curious is me and you, I know, as well. So, do you think there's a group of scientists that are running, not just, you know, we know they, they said they got some former members of the old Umbrella for Blue, but do you think there's scientists who are still with red umbrella that are still running the old T and G virus operations. Yeah, I can actually see that. Like for those who don't know, like the T virus was officially stopped, but in Resident Evil five, they revealed that, you know, it, it's, it's now belongs to like terrorists around the world and stuff. Yeah. That, yep. Yeah, that's what five was too. 
I'm I'm I think the thing with the T virus and the G virus is I think there's more to that than even what they've said with that, honestly, because you know how Capcom is that when they tell you something, it's sort of like a half truth. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. So yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm curious of is with the whole blue umbrella thing, who is, who do you think is funding them? Oh, that's actually a really good question. Um, Cause even with, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, cause no one would actually donate to them because everyone knows about the Racket City incident, right? So maybe it's someone that's already has money or someone that's, you know, in power but doesn't admit they're involved. You know? Yeah, I, I actually have a very interesting theory. A little bit I wanted to throw at you. Do you, do you think that? Uh, who was it? Um, do you think at all Billy Cohen isn't could be the funder? You know, that actually is possible because for those that don't know, he was a United States Marine. But not just that, you know, like, well, he's supposedly a traitor, but maybe that's what it was. Like, maybe that's where he's been this whole time. He's actually been helping, well, you know, funding them. Yeah, it could be. I th I'm curious to see with eight what characters they bring back. And even though I've never been Billy Cohen or played him, he I have read the story and he does interest me, Daniel. And do you think at all that Billy Cohen was a former Umbrella employee? You know that actually is possible. I didn't really think about, but yeah, that that is, is possible. For those that don't know, like you know, before all that happened, you know, Umbrella was this big company. Basically, they shot themselves in the foot. Yeah. They were the biggest, far, not just a pharmaceutical company, but they had a, you know, they had a private army almost. Yeah, and that's actually what's weird is, like, I don't think the, you know, the, I know this is weird, and for those that don't know, the movies are a different universe. That's why we keep pointing out differences. But I think in the movie universe, I don't think it was ever pointed out that they're a pharmaceutical company. I know it's kind of weird, but I don't think it was. I don't think it was either, but they are, a, that's what Umbrella is, they're a pharmaceutical company. I think they were healthcare company in the movies, I could be wrong, but... Oh yeah, that is possible. <laughs> I think they were, I, again, my memory is a little shoddy too with that, with the movies, especially, I try to forget those as much as possible, <laughs> but... I Definitely with the games, they were, you know, they're this big pharmaceutical company and they have all this money... And so it's it lingers sort of how far along are they even now because I don't think they're definitely not completely shut down. Oh, that's true. And actually, um, oh, one thing with the movie, I don't know if you know this, but did you know the movie, the first movie was supposed to be a prequel to the games? I did not. Yeah, that's... What's kind of funny is I, what I think is funny about it is they actually screw it up because, like, see, yeah, they wanted it to be a prequel, as I said, but if you watch the very beginning, they say, like, at the beginning of the 21st century, Umbrellas was, you know, a big company, but the um, obviously in the games, Umbrella was already done by the 21st century. And if you watch the very end, there's a newspaper, and it's dated 2002. So, yeah, they kind of screwed up already. <laughs> Speaking of prequels, I've always wanted a prequel to Season of the Witch. <laughs> oh yeah, Halloween, yeah. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah, I I would love for them to do that, definitely. Um, I don't but, know if I ever said this. I actually for, I forgot to say this in my review of Halloween 3, but for those that don't know, like people always say, well, it shouldn't have been called Halloween 3. I agree to an extent. Like I think it should be part of the Halloween series because... You know, that's what it's made for, but I think it should have been called Halloween Season of the Witch. I could see that. I don't... My thing of, like, title men is, like, it's sort of like Halloween 2018. Okay, you and I sort of touched on this a little bit with that, is that we wish they would have come up with a cleverer title. And 
like going into the next like the next movie whenever it comes out we're just hoping they don't just slap the halloween 2 label on it because the movie they just did was halloween 2 in a sense and that that's one thing annoyed me as i actually saw someone say well rob zombie's second was called halloween 2 what's the problem with this one we called and i said because this one and i said because that was a remake this one this one's a sequel you know <laughs> yeah this one's set 40 years later you know what's weird though is there are people who think it's a remake still. Like I even saw someone say that Rob Zombies is better than the new remake, and I even said, "How do these people keep thinking it's a remake? It takes place forty years later, and Jamie Lee Curtis is an old lady." Yeah, they really they sort of pulled the Betsy Palmer on her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she wore a wig that I was. I sort of wish she wouldn't have wore a wig for this a little bit. Yeah, I actually do too. Like, and actually, well, that's what's weird is like, for those that don't, well, I mean, I guess it's probably obvious now, because, but yeah, she has short hair, but see, some people shave their head when they are like extremely stressed, so I don't know why they didn't go with that. Yeah, they could have did. I like that, Daniel. I like that. I would have, I would have loved to see that. A bald Jamie Lee Curtis. I could have, I could have lived with that. Yeah, and actually, that wig she wears, I think, I know. I don't think anything ever confirms this, but I think that might be the same wig from Halloween too, because it looks like trashy and everything. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to say she does, but the wig itself did. Yeah, the wig looks, um, we'll say gritty. I don't know how long wigs last, though, <laughs> but I think that's the same wig from Halloween too. It could be. <laughs> That'd be something to ask Jason Blub. He might know. Um. Do you think that uh, we're going to see Nemesis again in the next, like, not just in Resident Evil 3, but we're going to see Nemesis again? Oh, you know what? That's actually a good question. Um, I know it was technically destroyed, but there could be, like, a Nemesis 2.0, kind of like they did with um the Lickers, you know? I mean, I know it's not called 2.0, but it's basically 2.0, you know? Yeah. I think they've made copies copies of these experiments. I don't think there's just one because in when I played the original Resident Evil 2 Daniel, that was my thought process with like the liquors and even like I think we're going to see like in the next installment, I think we're going to see a lot of old monsters return with new ones. Uh, that's true. Oh, and for those that don't know like I know we said the movie, like, explained where Nemesis came from. It didn't do it very well. It's just, like, Matt Addison got infected, and he became Nemesis. It's like, that's all it was. It's just, like, he got scratched by a liquor, or as they called a hunter, and now he's Nemesis. It's like, that's strange. <laughs> yeah, what's, there's even more weird to it, because he, what happens is, if the liquor tastes like human flesh, or touches you, or whatever... And then scratches somebody, it mutates that person. And Matt was the unfortunate, uh, unlucky one. But I, I just, I did not love that because I thought that was just such a big spoiler for the next movie. It's like, okay, we're getting Nemesis. That's cool. I mean, he looked, Nemesis looked good. I'll give him that. Oh, yeah, that's true. And that's what weird is a lot of them don't look good. So I'm actually surprised because that's one of the first few. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, at least it, well, at least it didn't call Nemesis Mister X. Oh, that's true. But yeah, what's also weird is like his scratches. Like they actually start having like little things. It's like really weird, like how they did it. Yeah, it's sort of like these little things popping out out of it. It sort of reminded me of um, Birkin. Yeah, that's what's weird is um. That's another thing, too. Like, the liquor was more like the G-Virus. Like, it, you know, it mutate after heal. But, yeah, for those that don't know, he should have just turned to a zombie. Since a liquor is scratch is just, like, from the T-Virus, you know? Yeah. That That's sort of well, what... Actually, what's weird... Okay. No, go ahead. What's weird, though, is you know how that guy in... The scientist says, um, put him in the Nemesis Project... I don't know if this has ever been confirmed or not, but a lot of fans theorize that's actually supposed to be Birkin. 
It could be Birkin. That's the thing. We've never... That's what's weird. Like, the movies... Like, I really didn't care for, like, the spoiler. But when I heard that, I did hear that voice. And I looked at my brother. I said, who do you think that is? And he said... My brother, actually, I gotta give him credit. God rest his soul. He actually said Birkin, too. And what's even weirder is the narrator is actually... What's weird, though, is... Um, Birkin is credited. If you go on the Internet Movie Database and go on the first Resident Evil movie, it says it says a guy. I forgot who it is, to be honest. So forgive me if you hear this and you're that guy. But it says narrator slash William Birkin. <laughs> that's that's sort of weird. Yeah, I agree. Do you think that um, we're gonna see not do you th do you think we'll see not just Sherry but both Sherry and her mother, maybe her mother did survive. Oh yeah, that could be. Maybe that's something they could touch on too. Like, maybe like she can see Annette and she'd be like, Mom, you're alive? <laughs> yeah, that would be shocking. Oh shit. What do you think, do you think Ada could be involved in Blue Umbrella? You know, I could actually see that because she even seems like that type of person. For those that don't know, or for those who haven't played it, yet, Ada's the type that will work for you and then at the very end screw you over. <laughs> yeah. The, Ada is the cruelest, is at one point in time, like, uh, she's like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be like a double agent but she's like in a weird extent of it though you know yeah she really is she's not she's such a weird character but she's fascinating too do you think uh... actually there's a fan okay no go ahead real quick oh she's a... there's actually a fan theory about her like some people say that there's actually more than one ada that's how she survived in resident Evil 2 of course that's kind of been confirmed false because but yeah, some people say that the Ada in 2, 4, and 6 are all different people. And what's weird about it is, like, in... I think it's it's either 4 or 6, but if you pay attention, her eye color changes. Like, it goes from green... It goes from brown to green. But I think that's more of a continuity error, you know? Yeah. Ada's so strange. My thing of it is, do I think there's more than one Ada... I think that I wouldn't be shocked if there was, but I don't think there is. Now, I know that's actually, to be honest, um, in Resident Evil 6, there was a clone, but I don't, that might have just been, that, that may have been either Capcom making fun of that theory or just, you know, a coincidence. Like, they just like, oh, maybe we should do a clone someday or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see Capcom doing it. Capcom going with that decision too. Oh, hey, you know, let's just let's just tease the fans. <laughs> but um, do you is there? Do you think Barry Burton is somehow involved with Blue Umbrella as well? You know, that's what I was wondering too. Because, like, like I said, like Natalia from Resident Evil Revelations too. See, that's what's weird is um, she's in the same campaign as um, Barry actually, so maybe that's the connection. Like maybe like, you know, like maybe he took custody of her, and then all of a sudden she tells him, "Hey, I have a secret," and then she somehow tricks him into going to Blue Umbrella. I know we talked about Resident Evil Three. Hopefully that gets remade, but what? What title do you think Resident Evil 8 should have? You know, that's actually a good question. Um, I was thinking Resident Evil, just Resident Evil 8, but now that you mentioned a title, let's see. Maybe, maybe they could call it, like, Return of Evil or something like that, you know, like, if they're doing the Blue Umbrella thing. Yeah. I could see that. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind them going... Like Resident Evil Eight under the blue umbrella, in a sense, like they go under. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You know what I mean? They're like going underneath the surface of it, because in you know, 
with the hero d not a hero dlc it was just we were just touched on it really oh yeah that's true oh you know that reminds me I'm, i know this isn't really totally relevant but you know capcom used to actually have umbrella like actual umbrella sh shape you know and it was designed like the umbrella logo oh <laughs> wow i never knew that they don't do any more but yeah, they don't sell them now, but you can still get them on Amazon, but they're only, they're like $70 now. So I wouldn't recommend getting them now. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> and one thing that sucks about them is, um, they're one of those things that's more of a collector's item. Like, a lot of people are saying, like, you know, they're, they're cool looking, but they actually suck as real umbrellas. And I was actually disappointed because I wanted to get one. I actually wanted to get one, you know, for a collector's item and then get another one for an actual umbrella. But when I found out they sucked for that, it's like, well, what's, why even bother having one, you know? There's a lot of cool, like, design places or craft places. Like, you could probably make one. Well, that's true. And actually, that's the thing, too, is I was actually waiting for, since I was going to get two, I was actually waiting for the design to, um, well, I was going for them to drop in price, but then for some reason, Cap got inside, let's just stop making them, and then, the price went up. It's like, okay. <laughs> actually, for my PlayStation avatar, I actually have the blue umbrella logo. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, I saw that. I'm like, I, I immediately thought of you. I'm like, oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's actually. Is the, um, is the regular one on there, too? I'm not sure. I know the blue one is. That's actually pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I actually did this. There's a background I have. It's of, uh, like, it's a, like a Neo City, and my that's my background, and my avatar is blue umbrella, and I thought it looked really neat together. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. That's something I'll have to check out to see if they have the regular uh, umbrella logo as an avatar. You would think they would. Um I know definitely the blue one's on there because I have it as an avatar. Is there Wait, any... Like, no, I don't know if you're into... Oh, good. No, go ahead. I don't know if you're actually into tattoos or anything, but be careful if you get a tattoo of the umbrella symbol because people will... Because people might come up to you and say, like, oh, those are cool movies. I don't have a tattoo, but I've heard of people having this issue, though. <laughs> My wife is actually looking into getting a tattoo of a turtle... <laughs> I I probably wouldn't get a tattoo of like the umbrella logo because of the movies themselves, <laughs> but the <laughs> the one the one tattoo that I that I was um, there was two tattoos I was looking into before like years before was um, I I was just gonna have uh, the the shy guy with but have him holding a Michael Myers knife from Nintendo. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. <laughs> you know, just for kicks. And the other one was the, um, was like a werewolf-looking tattoo. It was like the American Werewolf of Lud uh, of London-looking creature. I was looking to get that, but I didn't get them. I just looked into them. But... That does sound interesting now, especially the werewolf, the werewolf one. Yeah. I would definitely not get a umbrella tattoo. I, I probably wouldn't get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, man. <laughs> the blue umbrella would be tempting, though. It's a pretty uh, neat looking logo. Oh yeah, that's true. Of course, you never know. People would be like, "Oh, those are cool movies. Why did you change the logo?" Though? I'm, I just like, well, I don't like the movies. This is from Biohazard. This is from DLC. The, 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 not a hero. <laughs> I, I'm the type Man, of. Have you ever? Um, okay. I'm the type of person that would sit there and explain it. Oh yeah, I could see that. I do that too. But have you ever actually told someone who's fans of the movie like about the games, and they said, "Oh, I didn't know they made um games of Resident Evil." No, I didn't. But years and when the after the first movie came out, somebody came in and said came in the GameStop and it, it was their first time in the store and they said, man, the movies are so good. 
well, do you guys know what that's based off of? And the, the guy is like looking at him. He goes, you mean you've never played the Resident Evil games? And he goes, no. <laughs> he goes, if I, and, and the guy's like, if I owned this store, I would give you a copy for free. But he goes, but you know what? He goes, they're right over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I'm actually surprised the remake didn't do better. Like, I know it was exclusive to GameCube, but the remake and the and Resident Evil Zero came out the same year the movie did. You think the movie would actually have, um, you know, made interest increase and stuff? You would have thought so. I think so many people were focused on just the movie aspect of it. You know, they were more focused on the film, not the game. Oh yeah, I can see that. And for those that don't know, like people say, it doesn't say that it's based on the games. Not true. It actually says it's based on the games, but in the credits for some reason. Yeah, you actually, if you look at the credits, Daniel's right. It does say it's based upon the game, which is weird because they, again, they don't. I mean, if you looked on the internet, you could see that yeah, the movie's based upon the game, but at that point in time, you had to. You would have to look at the credits, yeah. However, in the fourth one, the fourth one, it does say that it's based on the games in the beginning, but I think the fourth one is the only one, actually. I think even the fifth and sixth one don't. Uh, that, it just, the movies are frustrating. <laughs> actually, the irony, though, is, what's ironic about that is, that, as I said, the fourth one is the only one that says it's based on the games in the beginning. However, the fourth one is when they start to actually really stray away from the games. So it's kind of ironic that that's the one that does. Is there any theories you have of Blue Umbrella, Daniel, that something maybe you, no one else has thought of? Um, it's actually a good question. Um, um I'm trying to think because, like, I know I said some other stuff, you know, like, oh, you know what, um, well, you know, people probably thought about this, but maybe Neo Umbrella was actually a faction of Blue Umbrella rather than the other one. That could be, Neo Umbrella is sort of, like, even though we're introduced to characters of them in 6, the thing of that is, you're sort of introduced to them sort of like in a flash in a sense like it's very quick oh that's true and actually um simmons you know that guy that was involved with the six outbreak maybe that's where he got the money for his lab and shit maybe he got it from you know blue umbrella yeah i could see that i think do you think blue umbrella is just a cover for something else you know i could see that um I think of what, but yeah, I th I think well, I think well, I mean I, I know we talk about them possibly being a, you know, evil again, but them being a full blown cover would be pretty interesting. Yeah, it really would. It just it's it's all very sh sort of shady with with the umbrella logo, and just the umbrella name. I mean, we that's sort of something me and Daniel are trying to touch on here with this is, do not take this at face value. <laughs> me off if they did this. I'm, I'm going to straight up say that. But what if you know, they reveal Blue Umbrella is evil and then they reveal their new project, Project Alice. Yeah, just yeah, that would be like the biggest ripoff of the game. That would make everyone stop buying it, so they probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> on, one, on one thing Jewel actually touched on is, yeah, Capcom likes to lie to the fans too. Stuff. Yeah, they'll 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 definitely mess with us for sure. <laughs> for those that don't know, like, um, I don't know if you you remember this, but when Resident Evil Six was coming out, they, they were supposed to come go back to its roots too. But yeah, then all of a sudden, Capcom says, you know, survival horror doesn't sell, which was <laughs> BS in the first place. <laughs> I actually do remember that they said, oh, they were gonna go back to the, its roots, and. I, yeah, I remember hearing that too, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> um, yeah, you can't 
trust them. You know? uh, and I know, like, um, I mean, you know. Capcom, I'm hoping they've learned their lesson, you know what I mean? See, that's the thing, too. Like, people were upset because they said Resident Evil 7 didn't, you know, it didn't do as well as 6. It's like, yeah, what do you expect? You bet, you've bet lied to people so many times, they don't trust you anymore, you know? <laughs> I really enjoyed 7. 7 was, what do you think was better, Biohazard or the remake? I'm actually going to go with the remake, to be honest. Well, the remake of Resident Evil 2, because I know, like, I, I like 7, but I kind of like the whole going back to the old games and the old roots, you know? Yeah. I enjoyed the remake, as did you. I'm going to go with Biohazard a little bit, because we got a new character, and we got a bunch of new characters. Um, And I'm hoping... I... You know what I mean? I hope they... I wouldn't mind seeing the character they gave us come back. Oh, that's true. And actually, I actually like the uniqueness of Seven. Like, it wasn't, like, it was still survival horror, but it wasn't, like, something we've seen before. But, see, it had roots of the cool games, but, you know, I mean, like, you know, we didn't, before we didn't have, like, this family. But this was about a guy who was trapped in, a, in these houses, you know. And I thought that was actually a pretty unique idea because... It's survival horror, but it's something we've never really seen in a Resident Evil game before. It may, it almost made me think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a way. I think that was probably one of the homages, because I know there was a few homages to like old movies in it. And as you probably know, like Evil Dead is one that was pretty obvious when he said groovy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. I, I will admit, I didn't really... I, didn't, I will admit, I didn't really like Ethan's response to that, because he said, that's not groovy. Seems mm -hmm. like his response would be like holy shit you know or something like that <laughs> yeah i thought i thought ethan yeah ethan's response was pretty plain i thought they could have did a better job with that as well i, I maybe I'd, he'll come back in seven you know i mean eight <laughs> i got that seven for some reason yeah. oh, man. i hope i hope ethan does in some capacity i don't know what capacity they would have him come back but i hope he does i definitely want chris jill Barry, I think hopefully eight we get a lot of playable characters. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, and another thing I like is like, you know, you know, it takes place in Louisiana. These are like a family of, you know, they're Southerners. But what I like is they're not like stereotypical Southerners. I mean, they have accents and stuff, but they're not like inbreeders, and they're not even stupid. They're actually just they're just regular people in the South, you know. Yeah, they're actually. You know, it's sort of something we touched on is they're just a normal family. Yeah, and I don't know if you've ever played the DLC. Um, It's called Daughters. But yeah, it shows like them before they got infected. Well, when they got infected, you know. Yeah, it actually shows Evelyn, like the whole sequence. Daniel's right. It shows the whole sequence of Evelyn. She carries up and Evelyn up to her room. Evelyn was... That's where I felt Evelyn was so creepy. She's like, they're mine now. And she's like, what? <laughs> I actually like that too because, you know, in past Resident Evil games, we never really saw what was like before the inf before any of the infections started, but this time we did. That's where I'll say Resident Evil, you're right. Resident Evil 7, I thought, separated itself well. It was really its own game from, you know, the rest of the franchise, but yet it was still, it was very much true to the formula of Resident Evil. I can tell some haters have never even played it, because some people say, like, it shouldn't be like Call of Duty. First person is the only Call of Duty-like feature it has. Yeah. Everything else is pure. Yeah, I don't get that either. I've seen some people on that, and I'm just like, well, it's not like Call of Duty. And it just really is. I've played Call of Duty. I played a couple Call of Duties, and Resident Evil Seven is no Call of Duty. I even had some guy who who hated it so much he never played it. But yeah, I had some guy who once tell me like, um, he said Resident Evil should have you know limited ammo and you know other stuff. He listed a bunch of other stuff, and I said Resident Evil Seven has all that. <laughs> yeah. Resident Evil 7 has limited ammo. Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 has limited ammo. Trust me, 
we get near terrified when we run out of it. Yeah. And of course, I hate to say this, but this the guy I was talking about, he, he's not actually... Um, I should, well, I probably shouldn't say it, but... Yeah, this guy I was talking about, as you probably guessed, his first Resident Evil game was Resident Evil 4. You know? I played 4. 4... I thought 4 is where they started to stray toward the movies. Yeah, see, that's what people don't get. People are like, oh... Because people say, well, if it was, Resident Evil 5 is when they started making action. No, it was 4. It was starting to happen in 4, actually. Yeah, 4... I have played I played 4 before I played 5, obviously. And... I actually prefer 4 over 5, but 4, I did feel they were going more towards the movies. I was like, I didn't love that they were going toward the movies, but I loved the gunplay in 4. Oh yeah, I can see that. Um, well, one thing I hate about 4 is especially that laser room. <laughs> yeah, that, that was silly. Oh yeah, I think we've talked about this before, but yeah. The laser room is rough to the movies. It's really annoying. Yeah. Um, what's What I found most interesting about 4 outside of the laser room was that Leon was working to save the president's daughter. Yeah, that's true too. Um, <laughs> And I know people seem to not get that either because like in Resident Evil 6, they ask if it's the same president that, you know, is, is the, you know, that guy, of her, you know, her dad. But it's like, no, it's not. You know, if you actually pay attention to the dates, he wouldn't be president anymore. Yeah, it's not the same guy. It, I found it interesting they started off with the murder of the president in Resident Evil 6. So. Oh, that I actually did like. I hate to admit it, but that's one thing I actually did like about Resident Evil 6. Because I like how it started off with him talking about revealing himself. On, see, I thought it was badass. Like, you're about to kill him, and then before you shoot, you see, like, a cutscene, you know, where it talks about, like, talking about going open about umbrella and all that shit yeah i i did i enjoyed that as well with six i think that's the one thing i enjoyed was this like the start of the story and then it's like the game you know it four five and six are like the movies you know but they did have good character play like we enjoyed the characters because we're familiar with them like leon and chris and I, that's the one thing I'll say. It, it was sort of a mix. We had, we didn't like the movies, and we don't, and that's sort of what takes away from 4, 5, and 6, but they had characters we love. Oh, yeah, that's true. And actually, um, there were some elements of the movies. Well, I mean, I didn't really notice this directly, but I told my one of my brothers about, and that's the one I usually talk about with that plays Resident Evil and stuff, but yeah, I... He actually didn't play them, and I said, you want me to tell you what happened in the Ada thing? So I did. I told him about being a clone. He said, oh, so like Alice, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why do you got to wound me that by, that way? <laughs> yeah. And actually, another thing is Jake is immune to the virus, um, which is really weird because it's implied that Jake was actually born normally. He wasn't made in the lab, as far as I know. Do you think that's just a structure of the Wesker DNA? that could be oh and someone asked me something stupid once like someone was asking who wesker's mom was and i said well i explained the illegitimate son thing and then the person said hmm then how did he get the virus injected into him and i said um that's shown on camera <laughs> i said he, if the fake ada gives him a syringe with the virus and he injects him to himself thinking it's an energy boost yeah yeah uh, but it could be his dna i don't know i i'm curious to see like it, like the Wesker DNA, because I think there's more to that than we're led to believe as well. I know there's another Wesker too. For those that don't know, he has a daughter too. I think I think her name is Alex. I mean, it might be Alexia, but I think it's Al I think she goes by Alex. But yeah, for those that don't know, she becomes a a monster in Revelations too. But so that's where it's kind of weird because his daughter did the opposite. His daughter, you know, followed in his footsteps. Yeah, I have not played Revelations. I think Zero and Revelations is definitely ones I'm gonna have to play down the road. Oh yeah, um, with Zero though, just remember though that um, you know um, just remember that it has the old format, you know, with the ink ribbons and all, and the fixed camera angles. Okay, I 
see, I'm 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 playing like the Ink Ribbons through the Resident Evil 2 remake. I got it on hardcore, and I hope it's not timed. Because if it's timed, I probably f that up already. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I hate those time things, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm not a perfect gamer. Like I I know I'm gonna f something up, you know. Oh, that's true. Oh, you know one thing I should probably mention for those that don't know. If you use a walkthrough for Resident Evil, there's no shame in that. Resident Evil is practically designed for you to need one, pretty much. Yeah. It, it's sort of interesting. We had, I think on Video Game Addicts, we had like some walkthroughs up um, of other people walking through Rad Brad, I think, for sure. But, yeah, Resident Evil 2. I, Resident Evil is definitely designed for walkthroughs. Yeah, that's one thing I don't get. Like one time I saw this another one of my other online friends. She shared a, a video about walkthrough, and some guy said, you know, Re and some guy made a comment about it. He said like there shouldn't be walkthroughs of Resident Evil, and then she said this is for you know people who need help, not me. But I don't really understand that because even like actually even like in back in the old days, like people think walkthroughs are a new thing. They're not. Back in the day, you could actually buy physical books of walkthroughs. Yeah, they actually had. It was a complete book. Yep. And yeah, a lot of people, and like I said, Resident Evil, you can't, if people say that they've beaten it without a walkthrough, I don't believe them, to be honest. I think the the only one I did not need a walkthrough for was 3. Oh, that's actually pretty interesting. <laughs> that's it. 1 and 2 I did. I'll admit to that. I usually don't use walkthroughs unless I'm stuck, but usually I like look up like, where something is or something like that, not like the whole game. I love the pictures they had in the book. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Oh, you know, it's actually interesting. You know how they have those special keys for the in the Resident Evil games? Yeah. I don't know if this is, these are official or not, but you can actually buy, like, replica keys of those. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's pretty badass. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Is there anything you want to add for our Blue Umbrella discussion, Daniel? Oh, um, you think in the new... Oh, I guess it's not Blue Umbrella, but... Well... You think in the new Resident Evil 3, if they remake it, you think they're going to reveal who Nemesis actually is? I would say that would be the one thing they're going to add if they remake it. Yeah, apparently it's, some, it's someone, but... Yeah, apparently Capcom was supposed to reveal who it was, but never did, for some reason. Yeah, you know, you know that was Capcom giving us the finger. Yeah, that's true. Now, Bro and Bro, let me think. Um, oh, um, oh man. Do you think um Umbrella could? I mean, Blue and Bro. You think they could actually become the new antagonist? And I don't mean like with Resident Evil Eight. Do you think it could actually go over to Resident Evil Nine and even Ten? I think that's going to depend on what they do with it to sort of. And I would say yes. I would say you. I, I'm going to give you a lot of credit because you you brought this to the forefront first. I think Blue Umbrella is going to be the new antagonist. Yeah, and I have a weird feeling Wesker. I know, and yes, I know people are going to say Wesker's obviously dead. Yes, but see, maybe he'll be cloned, like I said. But see, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, clones don't work that way. Because I don't know if people know, clones actually are born like regular. Well, I mean, clones are actually born like they start out as babies, but see, for some reason, that's never really been a thing in pop culture. Pop culture, they're always adults at first, for some reason. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's kind of complicated because there's, well, there's never been people cloned, but, you know, obviously they've cloned animals. But, yeah, they start out as babies, though. Oh, wow. That's that's sort of interesting. I I would be I think we could get Wesker down the road, but I think there's definitely I'm curious to see if they don't reveal uh Nemesis who made Nemesis in the uh remake. I think we'll get that reveal in the Resident Evil 8 game. Oh, um another thing I wanted to actually point out, I actually forgot to mention it. You know how um, Jill had a spider on her, and you know she was when she was being controlled by um, Wesker. Yeah. Do you think that was actually a stupid idea? I mean, not. I don't mean stupid idea for a Capcom, but 
stupid in Wesker's part to have it, because you know, obviously, all Chris had to do was remove it. Yeah, I really, I didn't love that idea. <laughs> it's actually funny as the movies made it even stupider. In the movie, it actually jumped off of her and started attacking Alice, and it was like a robotic spider. <laughs> God. Uh, this is why I will not watch the rest of those movies. <laughs> yeah. Now, I also thought it was weird that her hair turned blonde. I, I don't really get that. I think that was sort of to represent the evil side of her. That was sort of Wesker's doing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, another thing I thought about, this is like, well, I mean, this is kind of random, but in real life, clones also sometimes have different colored hair than the original. I was thinking, what if, like, Blue Umbrella clones Wesker, and he has black hair, and Chris asked Wesker, why is your hair black? And he said, because I'm a clone, you idiot. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> uh, that, that, that would be interesting. I agree with you. That would be definitely... Do you think we get Wesker, though, I... again? You know, that's actually a question. I'm not sure, like... Um, cause I would actually like to see him again, but there's like many, there's like many factors why he wouldn't be like, I said, I know he got blown up, but right. like I could see them trying to do it again, you know, you yeah. know how they are. Yeah. Capcom is very tricky. I'm very curious what of, if, um... go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, what if it turns out the one we killed is a clone? That wouldn't be shocking considering Resident Evil, you know, Resident Evil 1. But I'm, you know, all clones have an original. That's what I'll say. Oh, that's true, yeah. I Now, do I believe we've seen the real Albert Wesker? I would say no, we haven't. Oh, well, that's true. I also like, I know this... I actually just thought about this, but I actually kind of like how, like, Wesker is, like, you know, he, like, has, like, nice hair, and, you know, you know, usually, and, you know, like, he's supposed to be, like, a pretty boy, pretty much. But I think that's interesting, because usually in, like, pop culture, villains are, like, ugly and everything. So I think it's actually interesting they did something different. Yeah, Wesker is one of the best heel turns ever, the most surprising, as you pointed out before. I'm... I'm with you. I think Wesker is very interesting. I hope if they do reveal Wesker that it's the real one, not a clone. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, do you think they're ever going to kill off one of the main characters of, you know, like the main... Do you think they'll ever kill off, like, Chris or any of them? I would say that's coming. Yeah, I, I could see that. Like, I wonder who they'd kill off, though. I don't know. I guarantee you... That I wonder if that's going to be a player option. Like, you can save one character. Yeah, I can see that. Do you think Rebecca's ever come back? Uh, yes. I, th I think if, like, the next installment, I think we're going to get everybody, I hope. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I really, I would like to see that, actually. Like, I think, like... Again, it depend. I think, especially with the stars members, I think the next and like the eighth installment, we're gonna get every every member. I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. That'd be pretty cool, you know. It would be cool too. Like, like whose journey do you want to go on? Rebecca's, Chris's, Jill's, Leon's. I think it Barry's. I think that would be such a great option to have. Oh, yeah, that's kind of what they did with Six, but they could probably do it better this time. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely do it better. Actually, one thing I didn't like about Six, one thing I didn't like about Six is they had, you know, they had different campaigns, but they all tied together. It's like they might as well have just had one. Yeah. I think definitely, like, what it should be is, like, two on two. Like, like it should. they have to split up. Like, okay, Rebecca has to go with Chris. Jill has to go with Leon. Um, do you think, like, it could be revealed that, like, like, um, one of them got married, one of them finally got married, but to someone that we've never seen before? 
I think that's going, if that is, that's going to be a factor involved in the story. I definitely could see that. Like, I could see it right now. Like, Claire got married, and then Leon says, you got married, and she said, you took too long to ask me out, or something like that. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that being Claire's response, too. Oh, Jesus. Oh, goodness. I, I definitely hope we get every character um, in the new games and it would, it's going to be so neat to see what they come up with for the nemesis remake and the eighth game. Now, do you think it's possible that like, um, you know, the, you know, the parasite in Resident Evil four, do you think that could possibly come back? Here's the thing. I always thought they took the parasite was going to always be part of Resident Evil because it really, Birkin had a parasite. Well, that's actually a good point. I know, I know there's also those one things that popped out of um the chief's chest. I forgot his name, but yeah, the chief. Yeah, I know. Who you're, yep, the chief of police. Yep. And that happened in the original version too, I believe. It. It's so interesting because I'm curious, like if if we would, it really wouldn't be shocking, like if we get a parasite again. Now, one thing I don't get about the remake is, like, as you know, they got rid of the spiders and replaced them with the blob creatures. I'm kind of surprised because the giant spiders would be easier to make. Yeah, they would. I'm. Do you think we get the, the hunters back, Daniel? Oh, you know what? That would actually be pretty cool. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, no, not them again. But you got to remember, it's supposed to be survival horror, you know? Yeah. Ow. And also... If they bring out the hunters, I'm going. Someone should get Paul W. S. Anderson to play it, so he knows what the difference between a hunter and a liquor. <laughs> I definitely. Someone should just send him a picture of a hunter and liquor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know how that actually got. I don't know how that got past post production. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. That's a good point. It's it's not that you know. They definitely should not have confused those two. Supposedly, they had the actors play the games before they, well, you know, like, apparently he had the actors play the games, but I'm starting to, I call BS on that, to be honest. I don't, I don't think that happened. I think that's just something he said for publicity. Oh, yeah, probably. Now, I know, um, Mila Jovich did, because we already touched on that, you know, her, her and her brother used to be a fan of the games, but I think only, I think it was probably only her and Mi Michelle Rodriguez, but they, they played it before the movies came out, so that doesn't really count. Yeah, though them I believe. <laughs> oh goodness! It, it's yeah. uh, can you tell we love the movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? well, what if Paul W. Sanderson um writes the next game? I I I'll quit forever. <laughs> oh, that's another question I have. Like one time I was talking, about some, talking to someone else about these, and I said like how. The new movie actually contradicts the storyline of Resident Evil, of the second movie. And he actually asked me, yeah, but wasn't it a different director? And I said, it's a different director, but he wrote all six movies. Yeah, he wrote all six, yep. That's uh, weird, but yeah, he did for some reason. Paul W.S. Anderson, man, he just... Uh, <laughs> just, uh, man, I can't even... I'm not even going to say nothing. <laughs> just that oh, yeah, it's, it's just that frustrating you know like you know you know i've mentioned it's just what he did to that franchise was awful yeah i agree it's like yeah <laughs> yeah it's and it's it's a really annoying too because for those that don't know and i know we've talked about this before but his influence started leaking out into the games too yeah, I think four again, four, five, and six. For those who haven't played uh, Resident Evil Four, that's sort of where they started, going toward more of the movies. Five then followed the trend, and then six, thank God, was the last trend. And then we got yeah, yeah. we got the beautiful Biohazard game and the remake that is an excellent, excellent play. Um, Definitely, those two games are worth the pickup. We won't mention that four, five, and six are worth the pickup, but if you want to play them, we're not going to stop you. Um, 
just amazing. Now, um, now I mean, I know it's probably a weird question, but was was the underground lab in the original Resident Evil Two called Nest? I don't remember. I don't. Rem it may have been. I remember the lab being like a bigger part of the game, though. I was wondering about that, like, um, and I know we've talked about four, but I looked up on the Resident Evil w wiki. It doesn't say there's, it has ever been changed. However, if you actually go on there, it says like spoilers for upcoming events. So it's like, so whoever wrote that article needs to clarify what's the new information and what's the old information. Yeah, I would, that's, that's very conflicting. They did that too. Yeah, it's true. And I know it has pictures of the old ones, but that's weird. It is it has pictures of the old ones on the bottom, but then the picture of the new one shows the death. I mean, the picture of the profile shows the, um, you know, the desk of the new one, of the new version. Oh, wow. Maybe they just didn't research it for properly? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Now, for those that don't know, I can tell the difference because, um, you know, the old games had way worse graphics, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that was, those are those were called old school graphics. <laughs> the PS. Yeah, it's true. Uh, shit. Uh, um, it's always fun, Britton Daniel. On, um, I want to thank you for coming on, Daniel. It's always fun, Britton. You on, man. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. It's fun. You know, it's fun doing this too. I, I, um, you know. <laughs> it is. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description on Daniel's channel for Daniel's channel again. Um, he's at Killenberg. Uh, he's Daniel Culver on Facebook. I'm Jules Sains on Facebook. Um, he's at Killenberg on Twitter. I'm at Collinwood of on Twitter. Um, just always fun bringing Daniel on, man. I'll talk to you later, man. You take care. Yep, you too. See. Ya.